The topic for today is functions. So our last video, we learned about quadratics and um, the shape that we have on the screen right now is a quadratic and it is called a parabola. Uh, now this parabola is also what we call a function here. And I'm just going to point out a few things about this right here. So you see how there's arrows at the end here. Arrows at the end mean that something goes on forever. So it's not really making a straight line down, but it's going slightly out in a downward way forever. Okay, so it, it's not a straight line there, but it's slightly curved going down and out just at a very small amount. So using this quadratic, we're going to start a discussion on functions. Uh, again, you'll learn much more about functions in future math classes. So first I'm going to start by giving you a definition of a function. So a function is a set of values in which for every x value, there is one y value. Okay, so what we're looking at is that for every x, there is exactly one y. So I'm going to show you on the graph we were just looking at what that looks like. So from this graph, if we look at this, any x point that we take, there's exactly one y value. And that would continue to infinity going on forever. So my paper is touching the line in exactly one point as I move it along here. Right? So as I'm moving along the x-axis, the paper's touching the graph in one point. Okay? What I'm doing now is using something called the vertical line test. So in a vertical line test, I'm making vertical lines, so looking at the edge of the paper, and I'm moving it from left to right and making sure that the paper only touches the graph in one place. I'm going to draw another function. And, or another graph, and we're going to see if it's a function. Okay, so for this one, if we're looking at this, if we move our paper along the line, we'll see that my paper is touching it in exactly one place so far, right? Now as we come here, it gets a little bit more confusing, right? So here, we have essentially a straight line down. So for this x value, there are multiple y values, right? Because of this, we could not call this a function. There are more than one y value for this particular x value. As I move along the graph, everything else seems fine. It's just this one area that makes this not a function. I'm going to give you another graph. So is this a function? So I'd like you to try your vertical line test to see if that's a function. As you move your paper along, you'll see that the paper touches the line in only one place at all x values. So this one is a function. I'll do one more. This graph that you now see, is this a function? Well, as I move my paper along here, you see that there, the paper's touching 
the graph in more than one place as we move along. So this one is not a function. So in the past, we've been looking at just um, linear and quadratic graphs. Um, graphs can take many, many different shapes, though. So we're going to explore the idea of function just by talking about what we've already learned. So in the past, we're going to use the equation for a, a straight, well, not a straight line. We're going to use a quadratic today. Okay. So we have this equation, y equals x squared plus 7. Now, if we were if we were to state that this is a function, instead of y, we would use f of x. So f of x simply means the function of x. Basically, we can think of it as our y. But that's just stating that it is a function. So if I were to write this as a function, I'd write function of x when is squared plus 7. So the function of x equals x squared plus 7. Or we can also say f of x. That's another way to read that as f of x. Okay. Moving on, I'm going to let you know that it's not always an f that we see in functions. Sometimes we use a G or a K or a Z. Any letter can represent a function. So what we had just done was we had looked at F of X, right? Equals X squared plus seven. But we could have, could also call a function g of x. And maybe we're referring to two different functions here. Maybe g of x equals x plus 5. It doesn't matter what letter you use, but this is just referring to two different graphs here, two different functions. The next thing we're going to look at is how we can evaluate func functions for certain letters. So maybe here I tell you that instead of f of x, I'm going to give you the value for x. I'm going to say f of 2 equals x squared plus 7. I'm going to have you evaluate that. So what we do here is we take this 2 and we plug it in for our x here. So instead of x squared plus 7, we now have 2 squared plus 7. So 2 squared plus 7 means that we have 4 plus 7 equals 11. So we could say that f of 2 is equal to 11. Oop, I forgot a 1 there. f of 2 equals 11. I could also evaluate my g of x. I'm just going to pick a number, a, a number here. I'm going to say g of 10 equals x plus 5. So g of 10 equals x plus 5 means I take this 10 and I plug it in. Oh, I'm sorry. I should not have done. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Okay, so g of 10. So instead of g of x, let's, we said that g was, I think it was x plus 5. So what we're doing here is we're substituting 10 in for our x rather than the other number. So g of 10 means that for this x, I put the number 10 in instead. I'm going to put my 10 in there. 10 plus 5 gives me 15. So g of 10 equals 15. Now in this class, we're not going to do too much evaluating in that way. But I wanted you to see that because we will look at it here and there. And I, you'll also see it a lot in classes coming up.
So I wanted to talk about describing functions a lot today. That's what we're going to spend most of our time on. So we have a couple terms that are important to know, and two of the terms are domain and range. So the domain refers to the x values. We also call this the inputs. And the range refers to the y values or the outputs. Okay. So I'm going to draw you a graph here. And we're going to talk about the domain and range of it. Okay, so here's my graph. You notice I'm using a solid dot, or I'm sorry, not a solid dot. I'm using an open dot here. This open dot tells me that this point is not included. in the graph. And over here, you see that there's a solid dot here. That solid dot, or if there was no dot, we would just assume it was a solid dot, means that point is included on the graph. So I'm looking at, and this perhaps the circle's a little big, Looking at starting here at this point, and if you look at what this point is, we're looking at a negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So here's my negative 12 for my x. And if I look at the y value, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. And then over here, the end of my graph here, this point is represented by positive 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x and also um, on the y axis also 5. Okay so we're going to start by looking at that. Now for our domain we're looking at the x values. So what x values are included in this graph? So my x values or my domain I'm going to write in terms of x. Okay, so I'm going to put an x there and I'm going to talk about the points that are greater than or less than x. So I'm going to use the smallest x value here and the largest x value here. And here, you remember how I said the open dot is not included on the graph, so I'm just going to use um, a less than sign there. And I'm going to use a less than or equal to sign on this side because it's a solid dot or that point is included on the graph. Oop, did I count wrong here? One, two, three, four, five. This should be six over here for my x, not five. Okay, okay so my smallest x value is negative 12 because I start here. And then my largest x value here goes to six. So this here would represent my domain. Now we're going to look at my range. My range is talking about my y values. What is my largest and my smallest y value? So that was talking about x's. Uh, range talks about my y values. So when we talk about the range, what we're looking at is what's the highest and lowest y value. So if I look here, at my graph and I look at what the highest point is that y comes across, it's right about there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half up, right? And what's the lowest point? The lowest point is right down here. Um, and that would be negative one, negative two, negative three. So if I'm talking about my y values, my range, I'm going to use y. And again, I'm going to use that symbolism we just looked at. Now, both of these points are, in fact, included on the graph. They're part of the graph. So I can put um, 
markers like that on it because those points are included on the graph. And my smallest point is negative 3 because that's the lowest point on my graph. And then my highest point that's on the graph is 7.5. So I would represent my range as negative 3 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 7.5. Of course, you could write that 7 and a half as well. Okay. So we're going to look at another graph, and we'll do the same thing for this graph. And this graph is going to look just a little bit different. We're going to have some arrows on the end so that we can talk about what to do in these situations. So I'm going to draw this for you. And so here's my new graph. And what we're seeing is we're seeing this line go on forever and it's slightly increasing as it goes. So we could look at it as it keeps going on and it gets slightly higher and higher each time. And the same thing down here is it keeps going on, but it keeps getting a little bit more negative each time. Okay. So these arrows, as I mentioned before, means that the line goes on forever in those directions. So when something goes on forever, we refer to it as infinity. So we can have positive and negative infinity. So positive infinity is represented like this, positive and then a sideways 8. And we can, oops, sorry about that. We can also have negative infinity. Just readjusting the camera a second here. We can also have negative infinity, which would look like that. Okay, so positive and negative infinity. So here, if I were to look at the domain and range for this one, let's look at the x values, first of all. So for my domain, I'm going to use these symbols. And when we're dealing with infinity, we never use the equal to sign. We just use the less than signs. Okay, So it's going on forever in the x to the left. So that's going to be a negative infinity. And it goes on forever to the right as well. And that would give me a positive infinity on that side. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's my domain. When I'm looking at my range, my y values, let's talk about what the smallest and the largest y values are. So as this continues, it's not making a straight line. It doesn't just plateau here and make a straight line. It's still increasing. Hopefully you can see that. And down here too, it hasn't plateaued. It's still decreasing a little as we go. So because of this, we're slowly increasing the numbers as we go. So again, for your y values, you would also have negative infinity because it's eventually going to keep decreasing here and going down a little bit more and a little bit more. Just like up here, it's going to gradually keep increasing here. Okay, so I'm going to call my range negative infinity is less than y is less than positive infinity. So you'll be getting, to, getting used to those um, as we go. I'm going to draw another graph here, and we're going to talk about a few different things with this graph. First thing, I'm going to draw a graph that's of a quadratic. It's kind of a random one and not a very perfect parabola, but we'll use it for the situation. And instead of arrows, I'm going to change my arrows to dots. So I'm going to have a dot there. And uh, I'm not going, since I'm changing it, it's no longer a quadratic, but I still have that parabola type shape. Okay. So here we are, we have our graph, 
And let's look at the domain and range for this graph, okay, just to practice. So my domain is my x values. So if I'm looking at this, uh, my smallest value is going to be included in the graph. So I'm going to put a line under there. And my x value for that is negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I have negative 7 is less than or equal to x. And x is less than. And if I look over here, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So less than positive 6. So that would be my domain here. My range here is going to be represented by the up and down values, the, the y values. So my range, the largest value of y is going to be up here. So I'm going to count up above the origin, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So my largest y value is 8, and my smallest y value is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, looks like negative 3 and a half. So that would be my range. Okay, a couple other things we're going to look at here, and I'm going to introduce some new vocabulary as we look at this. First thing is the x-intercept. Okay, You should be familiar with the word x-intercept and also the term y-intercept. So if you do not know these, you should get them down. So the x-intercept refers to when the graph touches the x-axis. So it's when the graph touches the x-axis. Okay. Where the y-intercept, I should put dashes there, is when the graph touches the y-axis. Okay. So when we talk about the x-axis, we're looking at an ordered pair where the y value is 0. So some x value and y is 0. For the y-intercept, we're looking at the x value 0 and there's some y value. So we're going to look at the picture I just gave you and we're going to look at those different pieces. So here, for the graph we were looking at, if I look at the x-intercepts, I'm looking at this point and this point. So if I'm looking at those two points, I would name them my x-intercepts. So here I'm going to say x-intercepts for this function. And the x-values I'll put first, and the y values are second. So I have two x-intercepts because it crosses at two places. So the first one is a negative value, so negative 1, 2, 3, 4, and it looks like a little bit more than 4, so maybe it's 4.5, and my y value there is then 0, so 4.5, 0. Sorry, that should be a negative 4.5, shouldn't it, because that's in the negative. Negative 4.50. And my positive, it goes 1, 2, and then it, again, it's about halfway between the 2 and the 3. So I would call that positive 2.5, comma, 0. Hopefully that makes sense. Those are our x intercepts there. And we'll get more practice with this in class as we go. Um, oh, okay. Y-intercepts. I'm going to redraw a similar graph. It probably won't be exactly the same to look at y-intercepts. Okay. So for this graph, if I want to do my y-intercept, I'm going to look at where this graph crosses the y-axis. Okay. 
Okay, so right here is the only place that this graph crosses the y-axis. So my y-intercept would be this ordered pair. So my x value is 0 because I didn't move any to either side. And my y value is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. So this would represent my y-intercept. Now we also give graphs some other terms that I want to talk to you about. So the next terms that we want to talk about are the terms minimum and maximum. The terms minimum and maximum. So minimum is the point at which the graph is the lowest. So the minimum is the point on the graph where the y is the smallest. And the maximum is the point on the graph with the largest y value. Okay, so we're going to look at our graph. I'm going to give you a slightly different graph to look at here. But we're going to look at a graph and we're going to see what the largest and smallest y values are for this graph. So if I wanted to look at the minimum and the maximum, I'm going to indicate these as y equals. So for the minimum, we're going to have y equals, and we're going to have the smallest point on the graph. And then for my maximum, I'm going to put max y equals, and that's going to be the highest point on the graph. So as I'm looking here, I see a couple things happening, right? My graph is starting here, it's going up, and it gets to there. That is the highest point this graph reaches, right? So what is my y value there? So if I look at that, I'm going up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So my maximum is y equals positive 7. If I look over here, though, my minimum, there's an arrow here, meaning that this line is continuing in a downward way to infinity, right? So if I look at the minimum, it's going to negative infinity because it's going to go down forever. So it's going in a negative direction. It's a negative infinity. We're going to look at a few more terms having to do with functions and describing them. The next ones are going to be positive and negative. So for positive, these are values where y is greater than 0. y is greater than 0. And negative are values where y is less than 0. So we're going to be looking at a graph and talking about those in a minute. And when we talk about positive and negative values, we're going to relate them in terms of x. So we're going to use the structure that we used a few minutes ago, talking about the x values where y is positive and y is negative. Okay, So we'll use the, the x form. The other two terms I want to talk about before we look at another graph are the terms increasing and decreasing. So when we talk about increasing, these are places where you have a positive slope. 
So it's an area where you're having this type of movement go on. And that can be a straight line or it can be a hill, but it's generally movement from left to right. We're deep and it's going up from left to right. Decreasing would have a negative slope. And um, even though when we don't have a straight, when, we, when it's not straight, we don't really call it a slope, but um, it's going from higher to lower, kind of like a negative slope would. Okay, again, we're going to use x values to describe these two. So I'm going to go back to the graph you're just looking at, <clears throat> and we're going to talk about where it's increasing and decreasing and where it's positive and negative. Okay, so I, I extended my graph here. It's probably not a perfect extension, but we're going to use it today, okay, because we have that arrow on the end of it here. <clears throat> and we're going to start by looking at it with two different colors here. We're going to look at using black to represent the x and the y axis. So here, to look at where it's positive and negative, it is positive at all points above the x-axis. Okay, So where y is positive. y is positive in all of these areas, right? So if y is positive there, then we're going x the values where y is negative are going to start right about here. Hopefully that makes sense. So y begins being negative right there. So <clears throat> places when y is positive are values of x. And my graph starts here. So we'll find the x value there is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So negative 10 is the smallest value of x, where you have a positive y. And then you go over to here, all the way to the x value, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So all the way to positive 15. After that, we start going negative. Now notice, since these are both points on the x-axis, I don't put equal to. Um, I could, because zero is, is not positive or negative. So since my points are both, um, where it's changing are on the x-axis, I'm not going to use an equal to sign there. So this would be where it is positive. Now, if I look at where it's negative here, that would be this part of the graph down here, where I've passed into negative territory. So negative the small, the largest value where y is negative is this point right here, right? Again, where we have x is 15. And this x then is going to be, or the y values are going to be negative all the way to negative, um, actually I would not put positive negative because my x is going to be positive infinity because it's going this way on the x, right? So for all values of x this way onward, we have negative values for y. Let's look at increasing and decreasing. <clears throat> so when we look at increasing and decreasing, we're looking at where is the slope, we're going to call it slope, going up. So if we look here, this one's moving in an upward motion, right? All the way to about the top here. And then at the top here, it starts going down and continues down forever. So when you're doing this, maybe it's helpful to use different color markers to do it. Um, but what I'm seeing here is this first part is where it's increasing and then down here is where it's decreasing. So let's name the increasing x values. So we start at x equals, and we talked about this as being negative 10 before. So increase is starting there and goes up to this point. And 
I put this point somewhere between these two lines, so that's negative 1, negative 2, so negative 2.5. So during, in those points, we have our line increasing. Now after those points, it starts decreasing, right? And it decreases forever after that because it just keeps going down. So we're going to start at that negative 2.5 for my decrease. So here's my negative 2.5. That's the smallest value where x um, where the line is decreasing, the smallest x value, and it keeps going on and on and on to infinity, right? And since we're talking about x, this is then a positive infinity there. Hopefully that makes some sense. We'll definitely be working more with this in class, so you, this gives you just a little bit of an introduction to it. There's one other term I want to introduce before I end this video today. And that last term is axis of symmetry. So I'm going to just show you a new graph here. And with my new graph, we're going to look for an axis of symmetry. And here is my new graph. And I'm going to erase this side just to make it a little clearer. So I'm looking for an axis of symmetry here. An axis of symmetry means that I could take the graph and fold it in half and it would be identical on both sides. So if you think about a sheet of paper, right, if I were to take this and copy it onto my paper here and then look at it on the other side, you see how it's equal on the other side? So an axis of symmetry just talks about the point at which you could fold the graph to have it equal on both sides. Now some graphs have axis of symmetry and some do not. So this one does in the imperfect way I've drawn it. Um, and the axis of symmetry is right along the y-axis here. So I say that my axis of symmetry is y is x equals 0, because if I fold it on x equals 0, it's the same on both sides. Um, I could certainly draw different graphs, and they'd have different axes of symmetry. So let me draw another graph for you quickly. Um, so if I drew, I drew that to have the same one, didn't I? My axis of symmetry, again, would be the y-axis here. Let's say I drew this slightly differently, and instead I drew it right there. Here, my axis of symmetry would be right through here, which would be x equals 1, would be my axis of symmetry. Here's the spelling for axis of symmetry. Okay, so some graphs do not have axis of symmetry, and that is something that you'll see very often, actually. So here is an example of a graph that does not have an axis of symmetry. There's no point I could fold this graph in half, and it would be the same on both sides. Okay, well, that's your introduction to functions. Um, we'll certainly be talking about this again, but hopefully that gives you a start.